it's Friday the 2nd of December 2016. Good morning to you boys and girls. Here, did you see that um, uh, by-election last night? The Richmond Park by-election. Anyone see that on the telly? Oh, yes. Richmond Park. Oh, you would want to live there. Let me tell you, when I was a young boy, growing up, my mum and dad and myself and my sister, we all used to go to Richmond Park on regular occurrences. Yes, and as I got older, I used to cycle round there on my bike. Bit of a long ride, but it was a, such a beautiful place. There's loads of deers roaming away. Nice couple of places to have a cup of tea. It's such a nice place. If you ever get the chance to go to Richmond Park, uh, please do so. It really is very nice. The only thing is there is a 20 mile an hour speed limit now that goes around the park, which is understandable with the animals going to and from. But blimey, people do do it. <clears throat> they do 20 mile an hour, which I find I find it easy to do it to in my hybrid car because you switch to electric. And then doing slow speeds is a lot easier, but beautiful. Anyway, yesterday they had this election. The uh, Conservative... Um, MP who who was the one for that area resigned uh, because he doesn't want Heathrow Airport to be expanded. So he, he had made the, the people a promise and he stuck to it. I mean, all credit there, you know, he stuck to it. And he said he would resign if the government gave the go ahead for the extra runway at Heathrow, Air, Heathrow Airport, which, of course, they've done. So he resigned, but then stood again as a independent candidate. Right. And no one put up any opposition to him except the Liberal Democrats. I think that's right, is it? Or no, there might have been another cut. Was there another one? Or might I have that wrong? No, that's right. The Conservatives didn't put up a another person against him. So he, if, if, if he had won again, he would have won as an independent. And I think he was quite um, uh, thinking to himself that he would easily get it back. Well, he didn't. He didn't, and the Liberal Democrat woman won. Well done, well done, dear. But I'm looking at I'm looking at these pictures. What a lot of teeth you've got, my dear. Look, oh, hasn't she got an awful lot of teeth? Go and look her up. Bless her heart. Nothing wrong with having a lot of teeth. I used to have teeth like this. I did. If only I could find a little photograph of myself with my buck teeth, which people used to call me that at work, buck teeth. But this woman, she's got an awful lot of teeth. Now, what's her name again? He, in the pictures, he looks like he's crying. He really does. She does look a bit strange, I have to say. What's her name? Look her up. Liberal Democrat Sarah Olney, O-L-N-E-Y, who says, and it says, uh, she overturned, uh, Zach Goldsmith's 23,000 majority in a result that will be seen as a vote against a hard Brexit. Yes, and the bloke's... Uh, Zell, poor old Zach looks like he's nearly in tears. You shouldn't have done that, my friend. Oh, dear, but I understand he gave them a promise and he stuck to his promise. Unfortunately, it's backfired a bit on him. But have a look at her. Very, she looks like she's from another planet. She really does. Bless her heart. Sarah Olney. Good luck to you, darling. I heard her little speech. She sounds like a nice lady, but very, very strange looking. They're clearly not voting for looks anymore in, <laughs> in Richmond Park. Perhaps I'd, have a, uh, perhaps I'd have a chance now. If people are no longer lo voting for looks, perhaps I would have a chance. Yes. Oh, I saw in the news yesterday... Um, that the continuing decline for the X Factor just goes on. There are now more people on a Sunday night watching Planet Earth 2, which is an excellent, an excellent programme about wildlife and all that business uh, by the great Sir David Attenborough. 90 years old and he's still on the telly. I do hope... <coughs> I do hope to get to 90 years old or even older and continue to bring these, you these daily gems of television perfection known as United Kingdom talk. I really do. There's more people watching Planet Earth 2 now than The X Factor. Surprise, surprise. Surprise, surprise. Oh, I miss Scylla Black, don't you? Oh, doing surprise, surprise. Holly Willoughby is quite good. She's not bad at it, but she's not silly. And she doesn't sing the song at the end. I mean, she's only got to ask me and I'll happily sing, come along and sing the song at the end. Let me just blow me nose. I have a button here so you can't hear when I blow the nose. There we are. Good. Now, last night, I had a lovely, lovely night last night. I'm just waiting for permission 
Lovely, I've got my permission. Yes, last night, and you're, you're wondering what the permission is for. Even I have to ask permission for some things now and again. Yes, indeed. And um, <clears throat> last night, I was DJing where I usually work at the Two Brewers in uh, Clapham, where, incidentally, you can send, if you want to, only if you want to, you can send Christmas cards here. OK, I'm going to give you the address in a minute for the Christmas cards. But Thursday nights, usually I'm um, DJing at the uh, Two Brewers. And last night was a little bit of a special night uh, because uh, Tony, a friend of mine, Tony Power, has written a uh, another single. He writes lots of music, actually, uh, in particular for the Eurovision Song Contest. He hopes one day to have his uh, songs chosen to represent the United Kingdom at the Eurovision Song Contest, boys and girls, who, although, I've, you know, next year I've... <laughs> I mean, who's going to vote for us? It doesn't matter how, song, how good the song is. <clears throat> we could put uh, Wrong Direction on there and still not win, I reckon. Who is going to vote for us next year? <laughs> oh, well, not to worry. Anyway, so he's written a new single and it's to raise money for the Terence Higgins Trust. Now, they are an organisation that have been around for years and they help people with HIV and AIDS. Now, just a little, just in case you didn't know, just because if you've got HIV, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get AIDS. Certainly not in this day and age, okay? There are pills. There are pills, and you take these pills every day, and it, it kind of wards it off. It's like a, a, a manageable condition, a little bit like diabetes, something like that, okay? So you take pills, and hopefully you can ward it off. Not 100% of the time, but, you know, quite close. It's quite close. As long as you take the pills on time and all that, very, very important. So the Terence Higgins Trust helped people with HIV and AIDS. And that's what he was raising money for last night. Uh, we raised £730 in a pub simply by selling his CD, OK? As sung by the wonderful drag queen extraordinaire, the wonderful Miss Jason, who's busy, busy, busy. She is so busy. And a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful person. I always enjoy working with Miss Jason. And we have a little bit of a laugh in the dressing room and on stage as well. And I do, I'm going to play you a little bit of the music in a minute. And uh, Tony just says uh, I can uh, play it there. Uh, such a wonderful night was held, had by all at the Two Brewers last night. Thanks so much to everyone who came to support Miss Jason and the launch of the single. And, of course, big thanks to all who contributed to making it a great success by raising £730 for the Terence Higgins Trust. So that is fantastic. And uh, here is a little bit of Tony's single, which you can get on the... Um, on the iTunes, I believe. Now it's called. Right, let me get. Let me just get the title up because I'm going to play it from his. Oh, where's that gone? Oh, don't say. I can't find it now. Oh, there it is. There it is. Now this is available on iTunes. It's by Miss Jason, and it's called "Hold On to Your Dream." I'll just show you that. It's on iTunes, isn't it? <clears throat> there we are. It's on. Actually. I wonder if he could. Would, do you want to? Uh, do you want to talk? Shall we talk to him? Let's see if we can talk to him. Let's see if we can get him up on the line. <clears throat> Let's see. Let's see if I can. I don't know if I can get him up. Get him up on the line or not. Uh, it depends whether he's looking at his screen or not. not. <coughs> La da 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 da. I already got. See, I've already got the tune in my head. There he is. The tune is in my head. I'm, it might. He might be a little bit too late. We're kind of waiting for him to. Uh, hey, right. Let me play you a little bit of the tune. I'm sure it's on iTunes. I just want to check with him. The song is called "Hold On to Your Dream" and it's beat by a drag queen extraordinaire, Miss Jason. So have a little listen to this, boys and girls. It's quite a nice, catchy tune. It really is. It's not impossible, it can be a dream. Set yourself a goal, believe it in your soul. The one day you will cross the street. That's nice, isn't it? Nice and catchy, boys and girls. Here we go. So I think you should ask me to do a song as well, actually. I think I should release a single very soon. 
Anyway, so I've shoved uh, our phone number over to him. Hopefully, it might ring before the end of our little recording today. But if not, you know where to get that, OK? I'm sure it's on iTunes. It's called Hold On To Your Dream. And the artist you're looking for there is Miss Jason. Wonderful way to uh, raise money. Thank you very much for that, Tony. Um, we've had an email in, boys and girls, from Simon Keane. Simon Keane. Actually, it's not an email. It's a little status that I stole, boys and girls, off his little Facebook uh, uh, thing the other day, which he wrote on the 25th of uh, last month. And he says, are you taking the... If, if, don't like to swear on this programme, as you know normally. Are you taking the piss? Some bloke pub in Stoke just rung me up, and because Simon does karaoke, the same as me, and said, can you do me a karaoke on Christmas Day, 8 uh, 8 p.m. to midnight. I said Christmas Day night. He went, yeah, it's going to be very busy. I'm letting all my regulars who are on their own come round as I am on my own as well. OK, fair enough, I said. I'll do it for 200. Now that, to work Christmas night for 200 pounds, that sounds a very good price to me, Simon. It really does. God's sake, he said, that's expensive. I was thinking of more than, of, of, no, of, of, I was thinking more 60 pounds. Can you do it? <laughs> and then he carries on. Uh, take a wild guess, you knobhead. You're asking me to give up Christmas Day for you, for that you get more chance of getting the gardening job for 18 grand a year at Buckingham Palace than doing that, dude. 60 quid, you're taking the piss, I tell you. What do you charge? £3.50 a lager, five quid, double lax. I'll bring a hundred of my pals in for two hours and we'll pay you 10p for lager and £15 for the jack. <laughs> he said, yeah, see how much money you make on that, you tits. <laughs> I'm running a business, not a charity, same as you, idiot. Honestly, don't they? Try it on. 60 quid? To do Christmas Day night? Are you serious? <clears throat> I bet you don't get anyone. I mean, it's ridiculous, isn't it? Um, uh, there are now, I think rather sadly, a lot of bars that now open on Christmas night. Bars, clubs, even, I believe, cinemas this year. Hang on. Cinemas open Christmas Day. I think it might be the Odeon, actually. Cin why, why are all these places opening? It's such a shame. <clears throat> open Christmas Day. I'm sure I saw that somewhere. Let's have a look. Cinemas. Um, blah, blah. There we are. ITV News. ITV News. Uh, cinema opening on... A cinema... Oh, it's only one in Birmingham has been criticised for its decision to open on Christmas Day. The Birmingham Odeon will be among cinemas open... Oh, there are some more. Now, what's the other ones then? See, some of the Odeon's ones. Odeon says cinemas will only open Christmas Day if the team in each cinema elects to do so. So, I mean, you've, you've, you've got to say, yes, yes, please, let's open Christmas Day. I wonder how much money they get. You've got to be on times three on Christmas Day, haven't you? Surely. Minimum. It's like this gig you were doing. I mean, £500 seems quite reasonable to do to, to, to a karaoke on Christmas Day, but I wouldn't do it. Now, that's not to say I haven't worked on Christmas Day because I have before. I used to quite enjoy it. Uh, I worked at British Telecom Christmas Day when I was doing directory inquiries. Good afternoon, London Directory. Can I help you? That's what we. That's what I used to do. Yeah, directory inquiries. What number are you looking for, please? What's the name, please? And I used to put on all these different voices because it was really boring. My God, it was boring sitting there all day long. Looking up phone numbers for people who are too lazy to do it themselves. So, but, uh, so I did that. <clears throat> and I also actually worked, uh, I did a couple of, was it, I might have just done it once. DJed on Christmas night. Yes. <laughs> and the bloke there, <clears throat> who I get on very well with, but the, <laughs> it was the bloke who ran the black cap. His name will not be mentioned, Jimmy Smith. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll never forget, it was me that suggested to him, shall we open Christmas Day? And he, he wasn't too keen on the idea. And a little bit later, he come back and he says, oh, you mentioned Christmas Day. I said, yeah, he said, well, I'm thinking of doing it, but... And he then put his head, hand on my shoulder, right, like that. He put his hand on my shoulder. He said, but 
we're going to open it. And he looked into my eyes with like sad eyes. We're going to open it for the people that have got nowhere to go before you give me the price. I said, oh, do leave it out, will you, Jimmy? For God's sake, man. <laughs> similar circumstance to you, similar circumstance. So it's up to you what you do, Simon. But 60 quid, I would not. That, that's outrageous, isn't it? Absolutely outrageous. Thank you, Simon. Very busy uh, yesterday. I have now booked my little caravan for my Christmas stay near my sister's. <coughs> I'm very pleased to say the caravan because I'm a big, big fan of caravans. I absolutely love caravans. You want to go on holiday? No need to get on a plane. No need to be queuing up at airports through security, having your bag searched, getting touched up. Oh, actually, that's the point. I do miss that. I do miss being touched up by the security staff. Oh, it's so nice. Sometimes, sometimes, I'm, always, I'm pushing the boat here, boys and girls. I may be about to cross the line of decency. Are you ready? Sometimes I put a hard object in my pocket just to see if they notice. I really do. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Oh, oh, what are you carrying there? Don't know. Put your hand in my pocket and find out, big boy. <laughs> so I do miss that part of it. I certainly don't miss flying. I hate it. I hate I'm sure I'll go somewhere soon, you know, on a plane or something. Um, but I absolutely detest flying. And that's even in the posh seats. Even in the posh seats. I, I just hate it. Uh, caravan, you put your bag in your car. Off you go. You get it out the other. And you're there. And there's hundreds and hundreds of places in the UK to go on caravan holidays. This particular place I'll be staying at is Tattershaw Lakes, where I've stayed before. <clears throat> it's about 10 minutes drive from my sister's house. Now, you're probably thinking, why doesn't he stay with his sister? My sister has got dogs and cats. She hasn't got a cat. And, oh, little cat died this week. Peach is the cat. Oh, lovely little cat it was. Didn't like me at first, but I got on with it in its later years. Uh, isn't it funny how some animals don't like you? Have you noticed that? Some animals do, some animals don't. This one didn't. <laughs> my mum's dog didn't like me. Never got on with that either. That was a King Charles Cavalier. She loved that dog. But it didn't like me. He used, to go, he used to growl as soon as I went near to it. Probably, perhaps it thought I was going to eat it or something like that. Anyway, so uh, yes, this place is about 10 minutes drive from my sister's. That's why I don't stay at my sister's house. She's got dogs and my asthma kicks off. I've got to walk into the house and I start sneezing. <clears throat> Within seconds of me walking in the house, I usually start sneezing. Sometimes it doesn't happen until later. But other times, I can literally walk in, a couple of minutes later, off I go. Achoo, achoo, achoo. So I have to stay somewhere else. So I was staying in guest house, um, which was which was okay. But I'm not keen on guest houses because <clears throat> you, you feel like you're staying in someone's house. And when you go in, when you go in, um, you know, go back for my afternoon nap or back from my sister's house late at night, and you open the door... And generally, the, the bloke used to come out. And he's a lovely bloke. I said, oh, how are you tonight? How are you tonight, Chris? And I'm like, all right, but why did you come out? I just want to go quietly to my room. And they strike up a conversation. Because they're being friendly, nothing wrong with that. But I kind of want to go back to, you know, I, I want my own front door. I'm just a room in a house. Whereas in a caravan, they're like, they're little houses, you see. And you have your own little house for a week. And that's why I now stay in uh, caravans where, whenever I go up there. So that's all booked, all well and nice. It only works out to about £68 a night as well. So that's brilliant. I'll be going, uh, I think, four days altogether over that Christmas period. And uh, my mate will come up, come over here and look after Katie the cat. My lovely little cat. There we are. Um, what else have I got? Uh, the Daily Mail seems to be obsessed at the moment with Find the Picture. Have you seen any of these? Like, for example, they might have a sheep in a snowstorm. Can you find this sheep cleverly disguised in this snowstorm? And you've got to look at this picture and try and find where the sheep is. Any idea where the sheep is? Has the sheep got its eyes open? Or you might have a black cat at night. Can you, or, you know, things like that. A tiger. I think they had a, a Siberian lion or tiger. What is it? A Siberian, some sort of Siberian cat which was disguised in leaves and all that. And you're looking at this picture you know, and, try, that, and every day there seems to be another one on there. Have you noticed that? I've, I look, I don't even bother now. I don't even bother. And another thing they had, test your eyesight. And it was shaped, it might like be four square boxes. 
which one is smallest? And you look at them, they all look the same to me, dear. I think it's all a con. I think they're all the same size. Are they lying to me? That's what I reckon anyway. Right, let's to do uh, all some messages from yesterday's show. Where are we now? Just a moment, please. Messages from yesterday's show. Um, Eamon, thank you, Eamon. Eamon, who is one of our short planks quiz night teams. I do a quiz night every Wednesday at the King's Head Theatre Bar in Islington. Eamon says, I'm screaming the names Julia, Julie and Jane at the screen. That memory thing is bad, Chris, if you not, cannot remember them. I've got terrible memory sometimes, Eamon. I really have a bad memory, my friend. Uh, Simon Keane, who wrote the uh, little thing I wrote earlier, the karaoke host, says, uh, you would have got a GCSE in maths, Chris. No, I wouldn't. I didn't get a GCSE in maths. I got E. <laughs> After E, it's unclassified. That's quite the lowest one you can get. Uh, also, Simon says, Ari, busy roads. Why is it called rush hour when you do not go anywhere? That's true enough, isn't it? But we don't have a rush hour in London, Simon. It's permanent. It's blooming permanent. The driving is on and on. And my, th you know, three of my nights, I, I can sit in traffic for two hours getting there. The best, the easiest night of the week, funnily enough, is a Thursday. I can get to work in 45 minutes on a Thursday. Oh, no, that's not quite true. That That's the regular one. But I do do one every sort of four or six weeks in Maidenhead. That one, 23 minutes. Oh, it's lovely. Just to sit in the car, 23 minutes, and you're there. You're there already, isn't it? Hey, eh? So thank you, Simon, for that. Uh, today's birthdays, then, boys and girls. Happy birthday today to Mark Lackey. Happy birthday, Mark, who I worked with for a while at Belushi's in Fulham. Didn't I, Mark? We had a bit of a laugh there. Why? We had a laugh there. Happy birthday, Mark. He runs now a pub in Camden. Happy birthday to Richard Laidlaw, to Darren Evans. Our day, Darren o. Evans, a.k.a. Crystal Decanter, drag queen extraordinaire. And she used to bring me Mars bars, boys and girls. She used to bring me Mars bars when we were working together. I haven't seen one of those for a while, lovey, have we? Eh? You know what no, no Mars bars means, don't you? You know what no, no Mars bars means? Do you know? It means flat batteries in your radio mic when you're about to perform. That's what it means, lovey. So come on. <coughs> chop, chop, dear. Get the Mars bars back on. Happy birthday today to Ian Zachary Whittington. Uh, to Layla. Hello, Layla. Layla Lagab. When are we going to see you at the karaoke, Layla? Her name is Layla. She was a... Sh I know the words are not quite right, but it sounds good anyway. And uh, happy birthday today to Paul Davis. It's time to sing the song, boys and girls. Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. All right, my darlings, have a lovely birthday, boys and girls. And don't forget, raise some money for the Terence Higgins Trust by purchasing on iTunes the song by Miss Jason and Hold On To Your Dream, OK? Uh, being a fried... Sorry, I've got itchy eyes suddenly. I think I've got something in my eye. Never mind. I'll try and pluck it out later. Because I, perhaps I could just take my eye out and wash it under the tap, like some people do with their teeth. Oh, how awful. It's a Friday night, so tonight I'll be hosting karaoke, boys and girls. Karaoke tonight at Central Station in Wharfdale Road, King's Cross. Starts at 8.30, finishes at midnight, OK? Very, very busy night. Once again, karaoke tonight. Join me and uh, everyone else at Central Station in Wharfdale Road, King's Cross, Friday night between 8.30 and 12 midnight. Apart from that, have a lovely Friday. Thanks for watching and listening. <laughs>